Hello everyone and welcome to IVSA Bather's official YouTube channel Pashuwani. Pashuwani is a platform that provides you with veterinary education. Our video series consists of practical relevant lecture videos, field approach clinical aspects, guide and tip for future careers, smart content related to both animal and veterinary science. We believe sharing is caring so please like, comment and subscribe for further updates. And now Let's welcome a speaker of today's episode of Saturday's Sharing. Hello everyone, this is Yukta Prakash, first year UG student of Veterinary College Bidar, Karnataka. In this video, let's look into the bones of pectoral limb and I've divided it in parts. So the first part is about pectoral girdle and shoulder region. Pectoral girdle and shoulder region. It includes scapula, coracoid and clavicle. There are some significant modifications to be noted here. That is the absence of a typical pectoral girdle and only scapula being well developed in all mammals. All three bones are present in case of fowl. Scapula. It is flat, triangular bone situated on the anterior lateral aspect of thorax and directed obliquely downward and forward. It is connected to the axial skeleton only by muscles. It possesses two surfaces, three angles and three borders. Lateral surface. It is divided into two unequal halves by a spine. The ratio is 1 is to 3 in case of ox. The superior one is small and termed as supraspinous fossa and the inferior one is known as infraspinous fossa. The supraspinous fossa accommodates the supraspinatus muscle and infraspinous fossa accommodates infraspinatus muscle. Spine is little broad and bent backward and attaches to the trapezius muscle. The spine is terminated below into a pointed projection known as acromion process. It is directed downward and forward. From this process, a part of deltoid muscle originates. Medial surface. It has a shallow fossa at the middle known as subscapular fossa which accommodates subscapular muscle. At the upper part of the surface, cranially and chorally, there are two rough triangular areas for the attachment of serratus cervices and serratus thoracis muscle respectively. Borders Anterior border, it is thin and convex. Posterior border, it is thick and convex. Generally, the nutrient foramina is found on this border at distal end. Dorsal border, it is rough for the attachment of scapular cartilage. Angles Cranial angle, it is thin and formed by the anterior and dorsal borders. Caudal angle, it is thick and formed by dorsal and posterior borders. Distal angle, it comprises of glenoid cavity and tubal scapulae. The glenoid cavity is a shallow circular articular surface for the articulation with the head of the humerus. The rudimentary glenoid notch is situated at its lateral aspect. The tubal scapulae or supraglenoid tubercle is small and is situated at the cranial aspect of the glenoid cavity. Biceps brachii muscle originates from this. The coracoid process is a small projection from the medial aspect of the tubus scapulae from which coracobrachialis muscle originates. Scapula of horse. The spine is placed further backward. Acromion process is absent. The tubus scapulae is large and is placed further away from the glenoid cavity. Coracoid process is well developed. Glenoid notch is deep and distinct. Subscapular fossa is deep. Scapula of dog. The spine is placed at the middle and divides the lateral surface into two equal halves. The ratio is 1 is to 1. Both the anterior and dorsal borders are convex and the anterior angle is practically absent. The tuber scapulae is blunt. The coracoid process is absent. Acromion process is short and blunt and extended to the level of glenoid cavity. Subscapular fossa presents few rough lines. Scapula of pig. The spine is divided in the ratio of 1 is to 0.8. The spine is wide and further directed backward. Acromion process is rudimentary. Clinoid notch is absent. Scapula of fowl. It is elongated and situated parallel to the vertebral column. It articulates cranially with the coracoid and furculum to form glenoid fossa for the head of the humerus and leave a space between them. 
This aperture is known as foramen triosum, which gives the passage to the tendon of supracoracoideus muscle. The whole structure appears to be an elongated sword. Muscles of shoulder girdle. These muscles attach the forelimb with the body. First one, trapezius. It is a thin triangular muscle at the uppermost part of forelimb. It elevates the shoulder. Origin, supraspinous process from 12 thoracic vertebrae to atlas. Insertion, scapular spine, emphasia of shoulder and arm. Blood supply, deep cervical branch of costocervical artery and intercostal artery. Nerve supply, 11th cranial nerve. Second one, rhomboidus. This muscle is roughly triangular and thick. Literally, it is covered by trapezius. It helps to move the shoulder upward and forward. Origin, summits of 1st to 8th thoracic spine and ligamentum niche. Insertion, medial surface of the scapular cartilage. Blood supply, deep cervical branch and dorsal branch of costocervical cervical artery. Nerve supply, branches from 5th to 7th cervical spinal nerve. Third one, brachiocephalicus. It is a long flat muscle placed diagonally at the side of the neck and extends from the arm. It is divided into a dorsal part, cledo occipitalis, and ventral part, cledo temporalis. Origin, dorsal part, occipital bone, and ligamentum niche. Ventral part, temporal bone, wings of atlas, and mandible. Insertion, both the dorsal and ventral parts unite together and inserts to the cranial border of musculospiral groove of humerus. Blood supply, anterior circumflex, inferior cervical, vertebral and carotid arteries, nerve supply, 11th cranial nerve and cervical spinal nerves. Fourth one, latissimus dorsi. It is a very wide and thin muscle spread at the dorsolateral aspect of thorax. It is aponeurotic at the origin and becomes thicker and narrower towards the arm. Origin, lumbar and dorsal spines. Insertion, terrace tuberosity of humerus. Blood supply, thoracodorsal branch of subscapular artery, intercostal and lumbar arteries. Nerve supply, thoracodorsal branch from brachial flexus. Fifth one, serratus ventralis. It is a serrated fan-shaped fleshy muscle spread on the lateral side of neck and thorax. Serratus cervices. This muscle is placed partly on the neck and partly on the thoracic wall. It extends from 2nd cervical vertebrae to 5th rib. Origin. Transverse process of 2nd to 7th cervical vertebrae and lateral surface of 1st to 5th ribs. Insertion. The rough triangular area at the craniodorsal part of the medial surface of scapula. Blood supply. Dorsal branch of costocervical artery, intercostal and deep artery. Nerve supply. 5th to 8th cervical spinal nerves. Serratus thoracis. This part is thin, flat and ventrally presents 6 prominent digitation. In resting condition, it acts as a muscle of inspiration. Origin. Lateral surfaces of 4th to 9th rib. Insertion. The rough triangular area at the cordodorsal part of the medial surface of scapula. Blood supply. Intercostal arteries. Nerve supply. 7th and 8th cervical spinal nerves. Sixth one, Omo transversarius. It is a flat long muscle, extends from atlas to shoulder and remains mostly covered by brachiocephalicus. Origin, wings of atlas, insertion, spine of the scapula, blood supply, branches from carotid and inferior cervical arteries, nerve supply, 11th cranial and some cervical spinal nerves. Seventh one, superficial pectoral. Anterior superficial pectoral. It extends from the first turnebra to the arm. This is thick and forms prominence at the brisket. It helps in abduction of limb. Origin. First turnebra. Insertion. Ventral part of the crust of humerus in common with brachiocephalicus. Blood supply. External thoracic, internal thoracic and anterior circumflex arteries. Nerve supply. 11th cranial and some cervical spinal nerves. Posterior superficial pectoral. This muscle is thin and extends from sternum to arm. Its posterior part is blended with anterior superficial pectoral. It acts to adduct the limb. 
origin craniolateral aspect of sternum insertion crest of the humerus and fascia of forearm blood supply external and internal thoracic and cranial circumflex arteries nerve supply branch from brachial flexus deep pectoral this is a fleshy muscle extends from lat sternobra to the shoulder it adducts and retracts the limb origin ventral surface of sternum insertion medial tuberosity of humerus and the fascia covering the tendon of biceps brachii blood supply cranial circumflex internal and external thoracic arteries nerve supply pectoral branch of brachial flexus in birds pectoralis is the largest fleshy muscle of the body and comprises of three parts thoracic propatagialis and abdominalis the main action of this muscle is to draw the wing cranially in the down stroke flapping movement during flight muscles of shoulder lateral aspect deltoideus it is a v shaped muscle placed at the lateral aspect of the shoulder joint the hands of v are attached to the cranial and caudal border as well as the ventral end of infraspinatus muscle it adducts the limb and flexes the shoulder origin the cranial end originates from acromion process and the caudal end originates from the posterior border of scapula and fascia of infraspinatus muscle insertion the two hands unite at the level of lateral tuberosity of humerus and inserts to the delta tuberosity and fascia of triceps blood supply subscapular and posterior circumflex arteries nerve supply circumflex nerve supraspinatus most portion of this muscle is accommodated within the supraspinous fossa origin scapular spine and supraspinous fossa insertion ventrally it divides into lateral and medial tendons and inserts to the lateral and medial tuberosities of humerus blood supply superficial cervical and suprascapular arteries infraspinatus suprascapular this is a thick muscle accommodated mostly in the infraspinous fossa it abducts the limb and helps in slight rotation of the arm origin scapular spine infraspinous fossa and scapular artilage insertion ventrally this muscle also divides into two the lateral part inserts to a round rough area above the deltoid tuberosity of humerus and the medial part inserts medial aspect of lateral tuberosity of humerus blood supply subscapular and posterior circumflex arteries nerve supply suprascapular nerve teres minor this is thick muscle accommodated mostly in infraspinous fossa it abducts the limb and helps in slight rotation of the arm origin distal part of infraspinatus fossa and posterior border of scapula insertion deltoid tuberosity blood supply subscapular and posterior circumflex arteries nerve supply suprascapular nerve muscles of shoulder medial aspect subscapular the muscle has three portions cranial middle and caudal and the most of the bulk is accommodated in the subscapular fossa it helps in adduction of the limb origin subscapular fossa and scapular cartilage insertion medial tuberosity of humerus blood supply suprascapular and subscapular arteries nerve supply subscapular branch of brachial flexus teres major teres major is a thin elongated muscle placed along the caudal border of subscapular muscle it adducts the limb and flexes the shoulder origin posterior dorsal angle of scapula insertion medial tuberosity of humerus blood supply subscapular artery nerve supply branch from brachial flexus thoracobrachialis this is a small elongated muscle placed at the medial aspect of humerus the body is divided into upper and a lower part it helps to adduct the limb and to flex the shoulder joint origin coracoid process of scapula insertion the area above the teres tuberosity and anterior surface of the distal third of the shaft of humerus blood supply anterior circumflex artery nerve supply musculocutaneous branch from brachial flexus shoulder joint type ball and socket joint movement polyaxial ligaments capsular ligament 
थैंक यू फॉर वॉचिंग प्लीज़ डू लाइक शेयर एंड सब्सक्राइब टू पशुवानी